Yesterday, we had a story coming in from Marshall. I think yesterday about one, Marshall Troni coming in from the Manchester Evening News, the senior writer onto that website, confirming to us that the investigations are really soon coming to an end. And today, we've gotten a story coming in from Mike Keegan. He's been so much known onto the United Takeover and breaking the news yesterday that <coughs> Sheikh Jassim Al Thani had put in what we call a take it or leave it leave it or take it bid and uh, this time around is going to have to throw in some huge story concerning the mason good situation at man united that most of you are really going to go ahead and really contemplate on and obviously tell us what you think about it it's mason greenwood loan anticipated at the beginning of the new season that we'll see him maybe being loaned and we're going to see what other options have been really laid down by the united officials good morning united matters channel it is and it's the man united news show smash like button comment and share if you're really watching us for the very first time endeavor to subscribe to this channel so as not to miss that on stories that we do upload in here on a daily <clears throat> Rock and David is my name. And guys, let's take this opportunity and really thank the Almighty Lord for really giving us the gift of life. You know, there are those that have not gonna hate or afford to come back alive. They've not woken up from their sleep. But we who have gotten that chance to wake up, we praise the Almighty Lord. And for the Muslims, it's Juma Karim, however much it's Heroes Day in my country, but Muslims, Juma Karim, and I think you're thanking Allah for the gift of life. And may him really <clears throat> open more doors for you and make it clear that those doors will never get shut. <laughs> Not so? So, we are talking lots of stories. David De Gea's agreement, close. It's soon going to be unveiled by Manchester United. And lastly, we have something to say about another fixture that has been added onto the many that Eric Ten Hag has already scheduled. This is the seventh confirmed fixture, and it looks like we are left with one because Ten Hag wants his team to play eight fixtures, eight in number, this preseason to really get charged for the three get charged for the season that everyone is really talking about. Now, let's start it off with <clears throat> Mason Greenwood, Mike Keegan, tier one journalist working in for the Daily Mail. He's a sports correspondent for the Mail Sports. He has confirmed to us that Man United's internal investigations into Mason Greenwood is ongoing, but officials are looking into a move that would see the under that would see the 21 year old head that would see the 21 year old head abroad head abroad for up to a year. Italy, Spain and Turkey are thought to be the three likeliest options. He concluded onto the Mason Green story and told us that Man United are considering sending Greenwood out on a loan for a whole of next season. United could decide <coughs> to release him should they find he brought the club into disrepute or they could complete the review and send him overseas to allow themselves a further period. So. This is like the clear validation, the clear resolution, the clear <clears throat> decision that the club of Man United is going to go on and do. One, they all know that however much they might have gone ahead to really <clears throat> want to get him back at the club, having spent all those, having spent all those months without playing the game of football, he cannot he can't really get back to the person he was in the nick of time meaning that they can't send him abroad either juventus has been one of those Galatasaray has gone ahead to call in for his signature and some clubs in spain have shown interest in the player and let me show you the effect of a player taking long without playing the game of football in 2004 2005 rio Ferdinand missed what we call doping doping is when <clears throat> these ufa officials or fifa officials come out and obviously get you to do a random check onto your body system on whether you use steroids or energy boosters you know that are known advised by the game of football so that is one of the things that really happened to rio ferdinand so when it happened to him and he missed out onto that test. He was banned for six months. So he was out for six months and was not playing. So that day he returned, we are playing Liverpool. And you saw him every time go to the touchline, 
getting himself things to eat, water, because his body was not so much used. But you saw him struggling to get into that game, you know? Look at players like Ericsson. He has been just out for two months. But look at how he's struggling on the field of play, you know? Anton Martial, he's not back to the player, we know, because of the injuries. So don't take it jokingly and don't take it for, don't take it for granted for a player to be out for all those months. 12 months plus out without playing the game of football, you know? That means the club might be contemplating on sending him abroad to first do a loan and obviously get himself back to the levels he was on <clears throat> when he was scoring goals for fun at Man United. The good thing is that Edge is still on his side and his contract expires, is it in 2025? So they can even trigger <clears throat> that further option here to see to it that he really bees at the club of Man United. And they want to see to it that he really gets back his life and uh, that will be something great. But there is also an option of really deciding to really get him out of the club, terminate the contract, and obviously pay that amount of money. But I don't see that option of really, of really refunding him money of his contract when the Glazers are here. That's it. I understand they rather send him on loan for two seasons, he runs his contract down, and then finds the club where to go. But... I don't see the Glazers really refunding him his money. No way, because there are players at Man United that we are supposed to be compensating their contracts just to either really leave. You know? That's it. For example, look at Phil Jones. For the time he spent at Man United, he was really covering up space for someone. You know, you never knew. You never know. You might have gone ahead to sign a centre-back if at all Phil Jones was not there. You know? But they kept him around. He was paid money. And he just found himself running out of time because his contract is expiring this month at Manchester United and he said his goodbyes to the fans and his fellow players at Man United. That shows you how bad this club is when it comes to making decision making, when it comes to making decisions. So for Mason Greenwood, that's what we are getting coming in from Mike Higgan and treat it with the desired with the desired <coughs> reception because it's really a very huge story that obviously everyone would want to hear about Mason Greenwood. Now, after Mason Greenwood's story, let's tap a little bit into, into David De Gea. A story has been reported to us by Laurie Whitwell. He's a United correspondent for the Manchester Evening News. No, for the Times. Sorry for the Athletic. What's wrong with me? He's a United correspondent for the Athletic. <clears throat> he has told us that an agreement has been reached with David De Gea, but United are yet to sign the document. United continue to closely monitor the goalkeeping market. Eric Ten Hag would like someone to really challenge him if he stays. David De Gea staying, that's no longer a question. It's already answered. <laughs> Why? Him snubbing a day to Saudi Arabia that would have seen him earn close to 100,000 euros, 100 million euros per year. Just shows you how much he's committed to his job at Man United. Ten Hag told us he wants to keep him. The players told us that he wants to stay at the club of Man United. So they are trying to really get him, <clears throat> get him on a contract to stay good thing is that the contract has been agreed. This is like the sixth journalist telling us that United and David have come to a compromise on the contract they want and now it's all about the board of United to put pen to paper to it. Now, if David De Gea was a goalkeeper that Ten Hag never wanted to be here for some more two or three years, do you know what he would have gone ahead to do? Ten Hag would have found himself in a situation of really letting the board know that let's trigger his one year left on his contract, you know, such that next summer we're looking for another goalkeeper. That's it. But him being given another long contract as a, as a goalkeeper of Man United, it shows you how much Ten Hag has belief in the goalkeeper. So what he wants is simple. He wants to really get in his competitor because of some, some minimal complacencies that are going to hit to show this season, you know, like in the game of Brentford, you know, some poor passing, you know, some gifts that are going to hit to give, like the game of West Ham, the goal we considered, right? So, 
Ten Hag believes that if at all David De Gea is having a competitor on him, he'll turn out to be a very good go- a very good goalkeeper. Remember those days when David De Gea wanted to go to Real Madrid. You remember when Luis Van Hal came in through in 2015? <coughs> in 2014, 2015, David De Gea was pushing for a move to Real Madrid and what United did was to really submit the papers in late <laughs> and that deal never came to pass. So what what um, Luis Van Gaal did was to get Sergio Romero in goal. Sergio Romero came out and really acted well but obviously it reached a time when David De Gea had to get back into that goalkeeping department to be the first choice goalkeeper in between the stages of Man United. When he came in through, you saw what he did. He was really fantastic. And most of the seasons, David De Gea ended as a man of our play of the season, you know, because he went ahead to put in ridiculous saves as a goalkeeper. So I think Ten Hag is on the right track and I really buy out his his thoughts of really getting in a goalkeeper that is going to push him. Now, if it's all about getting in a goalkeeper that's going to push him, then you need a goalkeeper like Jan Sommer, you know? Same age bracket with, with, with David De Gea. And for goalkeepers, age is just a number. At that age, they can give us some four years and they can leave the club at 37. If I may ask, at what age did Edwin van der Sar leave the club of Man United? I think he was like 41. You know, that's when he left, you know? In 2020, in 2011, that's when Van der Sar left, you know, the goalkeeping department of Man United. So I think that is really a very brilliant idea. Ten Hag appreciating how good David Deher is, but getting in a challenger is something good to see to it that we see how he can hit his levels. For Ten Hag, he has always told players that no one is in my lineup. You get into my starting 11 on merit. If at all the other goalkeeper comes in through and obviously puts David Deher to his to his studs, then David Deher will find himself on the bench. That's it. So that's it coming in from the United board. And obviously Ben MacArthur has gone ahead and defended David Deher. He said Deher has kept 17 clean sheets in the league. Winning the Golden Glove is remarkable. Having a bad game happens, but that doesn't stop him from being one of the best goalkeepers. I have ever seen and worked with he's amazing obviously people tend to forget and they're just reactionary on what they think the situation would be and i really understand why the english media is so much against De Gea. do you know why looks like they want to set pickford to come to man united that's what they want that's why they want david De Gea out because i've seen close to three or four tabloids linking pickford to man united you know so they might be wanting to do that and i know when they're doing that when they're planning something that's what they do if at all harry Maguire was playing like linderoff they would have gone ahead to slit the run and lisandro martinez but because harry Maguire, most of the times when he comes on he's really a calamity obviously they cannot really get a narrative to build on to find themselves in a situation of obviously attacking him attacking players like Veran because their English prospect has gone ahead to fail to perform and meet the levels that we expect him to be playing at as a club or at the club of Man United. Now, big story that has been broken. It's obviously another fixture coming in through and obviously we might see, not even might, it's confirmed. United is going to be playing against Atletico Bilbao on the August, on the 6th of August in Dublin. I told you yesterday that there is a match that United is planning to play in Dublin and I never knew who they are going to play. But obviously, it has been reported by Indo Sports that it's going to be against Atletico Bilbao. Atletico Bilbao is where the former player of Man United <coughs> and Herrera is really playing at after getting out from PSG. Remember, he left on a free. PSG gave him close to 20 million pounds of sign-on fee and things never went on well that side. And I really believe that would have gone ahead to start Man United because he was really a very good player who used to play in the double pivot with Nemanja Matic and his class, you know, was really exceptional, you know. So, 
that's another fixture that has been added to the six that we have and that means we are left with one more now on the 12th of july 12th of july we are playing leeds on the 19th of july we are playing Lyon. on the 23rd of july we are playing arsenal on the 26th of july we are playing Wrexham. on the 27th of july we are playing uh, Real Madrid on the 31st of July we are playing Borussia Dortmund and then on the 6th of August we are playing Atletico Bilbao and I think Ten Hag might find one of the games to be played at Old Trafford and that will really make it to eight games of Manchester United so that's what Ten Hag is gonna hate to kick and I hope his cooking will really get us to where we want provided we get in the required players on time trust me we can give we can give we can give man city a chance for this title we can really cause a lot of headache to them and we need to be so much so much careful their 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 records we've been holding in the premier league for a very very long time like being the best title holder all league title holders we are having 20 liverpool is having 19 i've seen liverpool really trying to research themselves they brought in Macalista. they are planning to bring in thuram and manu kone so they might find themselves in a position of winning a trophy next season meaning that we should really get back to the levels of competing and obviously at least winning one more before they really make it to 20. then man city can complete the treble tomorrow that's it they can complete the treble tomorrow so we need to take care and these glazers need to get in money all the new owner needs to get in money to eat that we really get where we're supposed to be so guys your thoughts on to mason greenwood loan anticipated are welcome in the comment section below what do you make about david De Gea contract agreement reached and lastly the new game you're going to play against Atletico Bilbao down in Dublin. I sign out for now. Say your letters. I cover you all in the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Rock and David remains my name. Ciao, ciao.